Siegel talk at the Martin Siegel Theater Center at the Credit Center CUNY in the Midtown Manhattan, New York. It's a, a sunny day outside and it looks like finally um, we, we turn the corner here when it comes to weather. Um, I hear it's raining a lot in Germany. Uh, we have guests with us here from um, the important region, the Ruhr um, uh, in Germany, a former industrial landscape that was dominated by steel and industrial uh, uh, productions and has turned in a corner and is now uh, also known or very much known for its cultural work, artistic work for festivals, great theater, dance that is happening there. It's a, a, a great model for decentralization of the arts away from just the capitals. And um, today we have um, three guests uh, with us, Bettina Mills, uh, who started and works as an artist and works out now works from the ministry in as a support uh, for art. I will go to a bio a little bit later. We have uh, with us uh, the great uh, festival Theater der Welt, Theater of the World, which is going to happen or not, or opening or not, we don't know yet at this time. And also the important Ruhr Festspiele. So they have two big festivals about to open in the middle of a lockdown. And um, so we want to know more. What is happening in Germany? How is it all working? We just had this devastating call yesterday from India, the darkest call. I mean, we have done these conversations since last March. We have, uh, we have 150 conversations with almost 200 artists from 50 or 60 countries. Um, we produce talks every day. We were the only or one of the only theater institutions really mm -hmm. creating the program. It was the darkest talk we had in this hopefully mm -hmm. today show us that things are possible, that we can, can do something, that there are also nations where things are working and theater um, is, uh, have a strong footing and also it's alive and but fighting with the time of Corona. So Bettina, uh, uh, Olaf and Stefan, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Where are you all? Maybe you can tell us where you are at the moment. <laughs> Bettina, where? I'm in Düsseldorf, in the middle of Düsseldorf, and uh, in my apartment because it's a free day today. It's uh, so it's a uh, yeah. It's in the evening. We are in the evening at six o'clock in the evening in Germany now. It was a very sunny, beautiful day, and I was in the forest because it's very good to leave your office sometimes in this uh, times of COVID and just be in nature. And it's beautiful in nature right now. Yeah, thank you. So it's kind of the day of the dead, one could say, in Germany, it's an appropriate holiday in that time of Corona. Uh, Olaf, where are you? I'm right now at the festival center. Um, I'm in my office because the festival is running now for about one week. Um, so I wasn't in the forest, but there's a huge park around the actually quite massive festival main building. Uh, but today is like a very, not a low day, but today we only have pre-recorded uh, shows in our digital festival because we have just started digital even though we are live festival usually but in times of corona we decided to start as a digital festival and the city you're in is, um, is it the city the city is the city of Recklinghausen which is a quite small city within this huge uh, former coal mining and steel plant area which contains an area of 53 cities it's, it's called the Ruhr area and we are in the northern part of it, but it's just like there are huge autobahn ways connecting all these cities, and there are about five and a half million people living around us. That whole region could be looked at as a mega city, somehow connected so close. There are no more big forests or so fields in between. It's one big city of an alien or spaceship would land. They would have a hard time to know where uh, what one city starts and end. And uh, Stefan, where are you? Hello world, good evening, good, no, hello, we are in evening, hello New York. Dear friends, uh, I'm strictly following the stay home rules and that means at the moment I am in Berlin and you have this view here outside, it's a rainy cold day, it's fantastic for staying home and for being creative and uh, um, very warm welcome to everyone who joins us in this Beautiful day. Uh, I'm very delighted to have you around. My uh, place to stay is Berlin and I'm working 
and home office most of the time. Uh, our festival will be happened in Düsseldorf, the capital of North Rhine-Westphalia, Germany's largest stage with 18 million people living there. That's the highest concentration on population in Germany. And I'm just neighbor to Olaf. It's a kind of 30 kilometers apart where the Ruhr Festspiele are happen. And Theater of the World is a festival which is like a grasshopper jumping through Germany from one federal state to another. So we are just guests in this region for this uh, season. The next edition will be in 23 in Frankfurt, the capital, or not the capital, but the larger city in Hessen in South Germany. Yeah, yeah, that's true. This is the Landeshauptstadt, is the capital of, the, the, of Hessen, you're right. Amazing. So you have Berlin weather. People always wonder how come German Germany has so many philosophers, musicians, and composers. The weather is really bad. So you read books and you write books, you know, you listen to music <laughs> and you make music. It's one of the reasons that makes us Today very you got it. from other places, you know, like in Italy, where you're within half an hour from the beach, wherever you live. Um, let me talk to our, tell our audience a little bit about uh, everyone here. Bettina studied in the great uh, uh, Gießen University and the Angewandte Theaterwissenschaft, also with Ange Wirth and Molly Davis, George Tabori, and she did great work there. She did a Beckett work and Marie Dura work, um, which is very well known at the time. And she was a dramaturg and uh, an executive director of the Youth Opera Department of the Staatsoper, the Opera in Stuttgart. And she was the artistic director of a significant dance project, the German Dance Platform in 2006 at Theater Stuttgart. And she was the head of the um, independent theater festival Favoriten, the favorites uh, in also the region where she is working now. And she has taught at many, many universities and uh, dance study departments. What a great combination she has found for herself in uh, universities around uh, Germany and right now, she has an important job. She's supporting arts and culture within the political system of Germany as an artist. Uh, she followed, perhaps, was in 69, the student revolution said, a, a march through institutions. We have to also go into institutions to change them, to provide change, to be part of change as a working artist, a big decision, uh, what she made. And she is the head of theater and dance in the Ministry of Culture and Science at that region of uh, that state of North Rhine-Westphalia. North Rhine-Westphalia would be something like Texas, uh, Florida, uh, or um, the New York, state of New York in Germany is one of the states there. So this is a very significant big job where she was able to double uh, under her term there, uh, the, the funding. And then with us, we have uh, uh, Olaf Kroak. He's the artistic director of the Ruhr Festspiele, the festivals in Recklinghausen we talked about. And he took over um, the European uh, uh, festival from the European festival Trans Europa. He went uh, to the Wurfestspiele in 2018, if I uh, have that uh, right here. And he also worked mm -hmm. at the Theater Hildesheim, an important theater. Germany has a decentralized theater system because 50, 60 tiny states existed uh, before Napoleon ran over Germany. And they all wanted to be like Versailles in London. And all the little kingdoms had their little theaters. And we somehow were able in Germany to um, uh, keep them afloat, to have them running. And it's a fantastic um, um, system. He was the uh, dramaturg and artistic director of the experimental stage Ag UG, I don't know how to say it right, at the Lucerne Theater. Like, like underground, yes. Underground, OK. And then he was at the Schauspiel Essen, again in that region at a very simple, important um, um, theater. And then he moved to Schauspielhaus Bochum, which is a legendary stage uh, in Germany um, for many, many reasons of directors who have been there, who came out there, worked that opened there. And he was co-director of the International Detroit Project. He was the artistic director of Schauspielhaus Bochum. This is a very big deal. Uh, this is like saying you run the public theater in New York City. and um, and he has been a member of the German Academy of the Performing Arts since 2019. Just to remember our American viewers, there is an Academy of the Performing Arts uh, in Germany. Fantastic. And then um, Stefan is with us, who is running this uh, great theater festival, Theater der Welt. It became obvious in the 70s and 80s that innovations in the world 
of theater often are move faster uh, through festivals, international work, global work that has been seen. So he, like Olaf, is putting together, is collaging like a Robert Rauschenberg things, what he feels is important as a curator, follows his instinct, but also tips from friends and longstanding uh, friendships with artists to show the audiences what is contemporary theater really about as does the war festspieler what are artists working about what are thinking about artists often anticipate the future we already have a hard time living at the in the moment most probably Bettina and I we still live somewhere 30 years ago in Gießen what happened at our universities so it's hard enough to be in the moment artists can do that like the great Zen masters but they also anticipate and we hope they have the right questions for us. And at Theater der Welt, Theater der Welt is a part um, of that. He has been the director of the Ruhrfestspiele. Oh no, sorry. Um, Stefan was the um, assistant director uh, at uh, the Volksbühne in Berlin. This is a great, big and important theater. We had Sebastian Kaiser with us. We hope to have Kastorf with us um, also one day. So now the theater that defined the aesthetics uh, of Berlin after um, the opening um, of the wall, the most significant, perhaps most copied uh, uh, Stadt or Staatstheater or city uh, theater. And um, he has uh, directed a number of productions at the Baracke, where also Ostermeyer uh, started out. It's also a legendary place in the mythological uh, history um, of uh, German uh, uh, theater. He was at the Omsk Drama Theater. Uh, he was in Western Siberia and the uh, Gitis Theater in Moscow. We just had uh, Kirill Serebrennikov with us on Friday and he gave us an idea of the contemporary scene in Russia, what is happening also to him and his global center. So we, we know uh, how important that part um, of, the, of the world is. He relaunched festivals, the Theaterform in Hannover and Braunschweig and he, was part of the European capital of culture in Tallinn in 2011. And he has translated plays uh, from uh, Russian into German, something we care very much about also at the Siegel Center. We translate, produce, and also publish in small editions plays. We are the largest translator of actually Arab plays in English uh, translation. So we know how important that is and how much work it goes into that. And he was the chief dramaturg of the Düsseldorf Schauspielhaus, a very important deal. It is way beyond what's called the literary manager in America. Every manager in America sometimes helps a bit to rewrite a third act and writes the press releases and uh, you know works with the writer. But I might say that a dramaturg in Germany is very close to the position of the almost an artistic director. Often they are the, the archival history of that theater they work with. They make real decisions about uh, the identity of this theater and um, really help, uh, uh, like the Sherpas, they help the mountain climbers to get on the mountains. They have been there before, they know what to do, but, but they help and support to find the right way or the way that uh, uh, works perhaps the best at the moment in the contemporary sense, what in the moment, uh, what we need. And he was also the head of the drama program of the Wiener Festwochen, a very significant, big leading festival. So we have, uh, really, uh, I think, uh, uh, a great uh, collection to, with us to hear and to hear what is going on, uh, what the hell is going on in Germany now, what is going on with all your festivals, maybe, um, um, Stefan, tell us a little bit, what's, what's happening, we hear you having that big festival and the program is out, but there's no dates, no times are published. Um, the news are, I got a date for vaccination next Thursday which is quite a day. I didn't expect it's coming that soon. So, and for this, I have to go from Berlin to Hamburg because the vaccination in Berlin is quite slow. You might have no imagination how much um, uh, uh, Germany is a patchwork uh, a country as our federal system is facing uh, many of problems uh, between Berlin, Bavaria, Hamburg, North Rhine, Westphalia. Um, the way to manage the crisis on federal uh, standards has a many pluses and a many minuses. The pluses are for sure in the arts. Uh, we got a different way of support under this uh, system. Uh, Festival Theater of the World or Theater der Welt, this is a brand which is normally not translated, uh, uh, is created in the end of the 70s and had its first edition in 1981. And uh, uh, please allow me to say some 
words about the history, because uh, the situation in Germany after World War II, as we have two German states, East Germany and West Germany, is quite different uh, to the other European major nations, as they decided after World War II to create huge national festivals with very famous brands now, as we have Edinburgh Festival, Festival de Avignon, uh, the Holland Festival, Wiener Festwochen, the Vienna Festival, all these are artistic creations in the after-war time, founded in 36, 37, 38. And all these festivals been created to uh, recreate a, a, an atmosphere of peace and understanding via the arts in Europe, all across Europe after war. Uh, Germany went a completely different way as the Germans had to struggle with completely different political uh, demands after this. And the Germans obviously couldn't decide to create a so-called national festival as all the other countries created national festivals. Uh, the festival Theater der Welt came up as a many interesting interesting things as a more or less anti-establishment movement and a very unique and single movement from the grassroots by artistic interest of an incredible team around the artistic director of the Hamburg Theater in 1979 as the International Theater Institute gave at that season a title which was called Theater of the Nations. And uh, after the successful inauguration of the Festival Theater of the Nation, which was shifting from country to country at that time, the Germans decided to have their own theater festival from international standards. And so in 1981, the first edition called Theater der Welt, Theater of the World was happened in Hamburg. And this was a huge success because the introduction of international artists and international aesthetics in the beginning of the 80s in Western Germany was quite a revolution and an enrichment of the existing theater landscape, which was uh, struggling with their redefinition of their national idea. And Western Germany defined itself as a very cosmopolitan international state with liberal uh, um, constitution and democratic circumstances. I'm an East German, so the situation for me is quite different. I'm the first East German who is taking over that remarkable brand in Western Germany theater history. And that is for me even a more proudness as I'm allowed to do this in Dusseldorf, which was for long periods the, the cultural capital of West Germany, from boys to music. Uh, this is a place where I could just dream about as the East German by listening radio in the night and listen something from West Germany and what the hell is going on in Dusseldorf. So this is a little bit my very personal <laughs> introduction to this. Um, uh, Theater der Welt is a festival, as I told you already, um, a city or an artistic team has to bid for. Uh, we, uh, this is a brand, Theater der Welt is just a brand, and this brand is in the hands of the International Theater Institute uh, of Germany, which is based in Berlin. And the theaters or the cities who wants to have and to make the festival theater of the world have to run a competition, a bidding process where they have to propose a concept, how to do it in Frankfurt or how to do it in Berlin. And in this competition process, normally they are fighting three or four different regions and theaters uh, for this. Uh, in this uh, competition process, there is a jury. This is uh, the head team, the mem artistic members of the International Theatre Institute. And uh, in a very late stadium, they deciding we are giving it as the next edition, we are giving it to Dusseldorf. And the Dusseldorf team won it with an absolutely remarkable and outstanding idea. Um, Dusseldorf is one of the major German cities, they decided 
in the new century, which has just started in its 20 years, Young decided to have remarkable changes in their inner city structure and architecture. So Düsseldorf was uh, quite destroyed of in World War II and was rebuilt uh, after war. And now in the last 10 years, Düsseldorf made an uh, outstanding and exceptional step forward to refigure the inner city landscape and to reopen uh, places. They've been reservated for uh, business and for uh, shopping. They wanted to create a new atmospherical area in the city, which we called a cultural area. And in the end of this process, which Bettina has running through 20 years already as the Minister of Culture was guiding this. Uh, the Düsseldorf Playhouse, Schauspielhaus, which is a remarkable, iconic architecture building, uh, got renovated. And the whole area around this building is refigured as an accessible cultural area. And the idea was to have the festival on the top to reopen this part of the city as a completely new public space into, in this city. So the idea is that many years in the planning, now it happened to slide into the time of Corona. When is the official opening or when was it? Or how is, tell us about <laughs> Frank, what Thank you very much, I'm coming back. I have to explain this because this is a remarkable, interesting uh, way how to make festival and how this movable vehicle as feared of the world with jumps really from region to region is an engine for separate regional processes and always blending this with international artistic aesthetical movements. That's a very important point for this festival. Uh, the original edition was planned last year and what I have here in my hands this is our booklet from last year. We have a 190 pages with fantastic artists, companies, and the amount of works we wanted to present is 36 productions from five continents. They are involving all, conti all continents and involving around about 400 people from all over the world. The running time since its beginning is 18 days. So the last 40 years through Fear of, of the World was happened every three years in a different city by 18 days. And as you know all the reasons, uh, the worldwide pandemic came over us. And we decided together with the Minister of Culture uh, that we will not cancel the festival, but we will postpone it on one year as we've been very hopefully that in a year time, everything will change. It changed quite a lot, but not that remarkable yet. So we are about to open on the 17th of June and will run till 4th of July, the remarkable 18 days. And as it looks like at the moment, we will be able to present 26 international productions and we might have the chance to bring 300 people to Düsseldorf. This is what we have now. And I allowed myself to send our recent just yesterday finalized booklet for everyone to read in English language, you can introduce, you are introduced to all these productions. You can read this PDF file, 130 uh, pages. So we lost <laughs> around about 60 pages, but we did not lost our hope and our effort to bring this festival to Germany. Yeah, amazing. Thank you for the introduction. Of course, there's so much more to say just about this festival. And it's postponed for a year, supposed to open in June. Um, Stefan actually got a call uh, be shortly before we started, you know, from a, his uh, a boss, more or less, what can be done, what cannot be done. He said, I'll wait, I have to do this talk later. It's in the flux. Nobody also really knows what can happen, how much and how little, but the good sign is there will be, if we understand now, a festival and a week ago, it was perhaps not so clear. Ola, um, um, thank you for, for waiting. And um, But, you know, we, it's all about listening in, in our talk. So also take your time. Tell us about your Urfest Spiele. What is the concept? What is the idea? And how come this is all happening so close to each other? 
Yeah, Stefan just uh, mentioned it. Our festival was actually founded at the same time as Avignon Festival, for example. We were founded in 1947. So this is the 75th edition. And it's the oldest festival in Germany and actually one of the oldest in, in Europe. And there's a very, very special story uh, to be told why this festival was, was created and was uh, founded. And that was that in 46, 1946, just right after the war, there was a heavy winter in Germany. And due to the fact that uh, all the cities have been destroyed for, for a reason, uh, also the, 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 some of the theaters have had huge problems and uh, especially the theaters in Hamburg, they were so cold and that they were running out of coal to heat them up. So they were driving down with very improvised kind of truck vehicles down here to the rural area where all the coal mines are placed. And so they knocked on the first uh, coal mine that they found that was here in the city of Recklinghausen and they asked for coal to heat up the theaters again. And um, these coal miners, they agreed, even though it wasn't allowed, this was a kind of smuggling uh, due to the fact that the, um, the, the Brits were just controlling everything, but which was like the right decision at the time. So they were smuggling the coals for heating up theaters in Hamburg. And in exchange, one summer later, the Hamburg theater people came down here to perform theater in front of these coal miners. And that was the founding moment of the festival. And maybe for a, for a non-German, non-European audience, it might be really interesting who is founding the festival from the very moment till now. One is the city who's giving money for the festival. And the other one is the state's council, which is Bettina is working for it. But the third one is really interesting because it's the German unions who are fi fi um, financing the festival. So all the unions, they have a head organization and they are they have a certain amount of money. And so they are also giving their money for one arts event. So like a contemporary arts theater festival is, is found by German unions, which is a very unique situation. So our festival located in this area of that, that is just like um, structured through labor because this is an area where people are working, where they're working in, 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 in plants, in huge industries. Um, they are going to see once a year, always in May and June, a contemporary arts festival that lasts for nine weeks. So our festival is for nine weeks and even with the uh, Corona pandemic last year, we've been canceled. But this year we're taking place and it lasts for nine weeks and we have about 90 productions each year and like 800 artists come in here and the average, if, if we are live festival, the average amount of spectators is between 60 and 80,000 people watching performances. But this year, due to the fact that we are also in a lockdown situation, the pandemic still holds its hands on Germany. I'm not vaccinated so far, as Stefan said, um, but so that's why we decided to start the festival as a digital festival. So a lot of our productions uh, are just trans transported into a digital area that we call our digital uh, Ruhrfestspiel theater. Um, but we are just positive because there are some news the, the, the numbers of, of infections are really going down right now. And so hopefully we have the chance within two weeks time also to open our spaces for a live audience. So let me get that right. You postponed it for a year. You didn't do something last year. You, yes. you will have about um, nine weeks of a festival. Officially, it has started. Yeah, you, last cannot year. Bring, you cannot bring the theater artists in. You do a digital version. You use the money. You pay the theater artists. But you're yes. on standby from a call from Bettina, the ministry, or someone else to say, OK, and then they would come in and play. Do, do I get that right? Yeah, in general, that's right. Um, yes, we are paying the artists. Also, these, those artists who are just due to, due to the fact that we had to cancel a live production, they also received some money. So because we have had contracts with them, we wanted them to, to have them here. And just from, on, from yesterday on, we know now how this perspective of opening up uh, theater venues could take place. There's a very specific way of opening up. We, we should start with open air productions and later on we might also have the chance to open um, indoor venues. So hopefully till the end of the festival, which ends on the 20th of June, we also have real people, real audience, spectators and artists in the building. But the opening of the festival, which was on the 2nd of May, 
was opened by the great Japanese uh, um, actor Yoshi Ueda, who is from the Peter Brook Ensemble, who is now 87 years old. He was live at our building to perform in front of cameras and we streamed it live onto our festival platform. Incredible. I think to both of you, we will come back to that idea of presenting ru the rules and how to deal with the digital and the screens. Um, but, but now we come um, to uh, Bettina. Bettina, uh, listening to, to, to your colleagues, um, what comes to your mind? Um, first of all, I want, to, uh, I want to thank you. I didn't do this in the beginning. I think it's amazing what you do, having 250 artists, you said, in this last year, starting in March and opening a, a window into uh, many, many uh, global um, countries and giving the opportunity to have this exchange. I think it's a fantastic idea. So it's really nice to, to have us here in this Zoom. Um, I, I, I always think my, this, uh, this region North, in uh, Northern Westphalia, it, uh, it's probably the most dense theater landscape we have around the world. So there's like 25, big city theaters. There's an incredible independent scene. There's many, many um, uh, production houses which work in a very experimental way like the dance house in, in Dusseldorf or the Opak Zollverein on the UNESCO World Heritage uh, Zollverein, which is a former mining area. And there is festivals like Ruhrfestspiele and um, today we open also Stücke, which might be interesting also for some in the, in the audience now. It's a festival on new theater texts. Um, this will open now at seven o'clock. So there are people like René Polesch or uh, Efrede Janilek, um, many, many uh, great writers, um, dramatists, Came, had their, I think, got the big prizes there. So, and, and we have today the opening of Berliner Theatertreffen. So, this period of May, June is a period of a lot, a lot of festivals. And um, I have to say, uh, the, 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 the doubling of the theater budget was, of course, done by the government. And I think it's, um, it's very good because it's, uh, it gave a lot of strength. And it's in the same time very hard because now, since one year, in the same moment you give the strength, we renovated the Schauspielhaus in Düsseldorf and then everybody was running against a wall of uh, beton. And uh, since then, everybody is working very, very much. I think we have a fantastic situation because we, there's really a lot of financial support for artists. Uh, only in, uh, in North Rhine Westphalia, we had around 200 million um, euro to give um, funding to to independent artists the for fellowships, funding, and there's a lot of the two hundred million are special what? funding or part of a budget. Yes, yeah, special uh, special. Um, you get like around like seven thousand euro, but you're quite free to do what you uh, want to do artistically because we realize one thing is the institutions which are quite well. Uh, protected in Germany also in these times, but it was, it's a very difficult situation for uh, for artists to work uh, in independently. So we um, th this was one of the first um, fields where the government really put energy and money to to give uh, to to help uh, artists which are not connected to an institution. And but I, th I always think it's like an incredible, beautiful garden. Um, but of course, the situation is quite hard and, and we are right, right now in between like two areas because there was a very hard lockdown for the last four weeks uh, to get the numbers of infections down and they are getting quite well down now because you also have the vaccination and so on. Uh, but not the theaters are not able to open again. And not, there's very different developments now in Germany. If I, today, the opera in Munich will perform for the first time. And also when you look at Europe, it's very different. Luxembourg is performing, Paris is opening on the 19th, Théâtre de la Ville. So Europe has very different rules. And I think like Stefan said, there's a lot of plus and a lot of 
also some problems, but I think there is more plus because the support for culture is really strong in this time. I think it's it's just an amazing garden, and when you when you think of a festival like uh, this, this uh, mythos of Ruhrfestspiele, the funding mythos is really amazing. This exchange, and it's an um, Uh, it's still a festival which is attracting a lot, a lot of very different people, not like a festival maybe in Berlin or in, in Munich or maybe even in Frankfurt, but it's, it's, it's very, very um, different people that are coming, young people. I mean, you, it's, you don't have the classical worker anymore. There is a big transformation, of course, in the area. And um, there is also a use of this old industrial architectures. North Rhine Westphalia is quite famous for, like we have the next festival, Ruhrtriennale, which is taking play, place in summer, which is especially using this beautiful old um, industrial uh, areas. Mm. And, and uh, I mean, I just realized when, when Stefan was telling the story of Theater der Welt, so when we were studying in Gießen in 85, that was my first Theater der Welt. And it was really like an earthquake. So I, I saw Jan Favre for the first time. I saw Neat Company, which was called Epigonen. And I saw many, many other um, performances. And uh, I think it's... Uh, it was so much opening my mind for the international uh, cosmos, which was there. Because after World War II, which is amazing, is the urgence of people reopening the theaters. Like um, Olaf was describing this in, in 46, they, they made this effort to reopen the theaters in Hamburg. In 46, they were reopening the theaters in Uh, Duisburg and, and many of the industrial areas here and um, so I hope this urgence will also be there but it was this system in Germany after the second world war was, was in a way very much also dedicated uh, to the ensemble to, to German theater and Theater der Nationen and Theater, theater of Nations and uh, Theater der Welt um, and also the World Festspiele, which had always always this European uh, idea, uh, they were like very important windows to know what's going on. You could see Japanese theater, theater from Bali and from uh, China and from South America. So like this festival um, in which was supposed to take place in 22 and which in 2020, which will now be in 21. And we hope it can open and there will be public uh, performances, live performances. It's bringing fantastic performances, for example, from Chile with uh, Calderon and or with Malen, which is a, it's a performance of um, Mapuche uh, women and um, People are coming from Nigeria, from Argentina. So it's it, normally it's a fantastic situation to discover what you don't know and to get curious uh, for all this uh, beautiful artists. And we have a fantastic situation also because we have an open air stage on the place in front of the theater, which is constructed by Raumlabor. So I think especially in this situation where we still don't know when we can open the theaters, It's, it's great to have an extra space and to have this uh, outdoor stage, which is, uh, which is a very beautiful one. Almost going back to the roots of kind of Greek outdoor theater, if there's something we have to reinvent. I also want yeah, to maybe. <laughs> uh, Pina Bausch, the <laughs> company, the Tanztheater, um, comes from that region, was hosted mm -hmm. in Wuppertal there. I mean, the Bochum Theater with Paimann and, uh, and, and also early George Tabori. So it, this structure really supported incredibly the artist. And I would like to talk later on also, what is the time of Corona perhaps will do? Is it something like after World War II? Is there something new taking place mm -hmm. before? I would like to go back to uh, uh, Stefan and Olaf, and maybe we start with Olaf again. Um, Presenting live work, which is not possible, it might be, but not, and the digital representation. How, how, how do you guys deal with it? What did you learn? Uh, Stefan, you wanted to say something, or we start with Olaf? Uh, okay. yeah. I, I, I wanted just to give a very a, a two minutes lecture 
how does it work in Germany? Just to let the Americans understand how it is, just to get a feeling. We are a federal country of 16 states and each state has a, a specific rules, what is happen, when, and everything works under an index. Uh, this is a number which contains a meridian uh, regarding the last seven days and how many infections came through or new infections came on 100,000 people. That's the index. And the magic number in the middle of this is the index number 100. So if the index number is going below 100, that means less than 100 new infections on 100,000 people, uh, citizens, then uh, there is a chain of things that they are allowed to us to do. So we are sitting in front of the snake and looking on this number as this is at the moment in Dusseldorf at 105. And as only we going under this 105 and we reaching 99 for a period of five days, then we are allowed to make art in public spaces. Then restaurants are allowed to reopen. And this is all about these numbers. And uh, we have a federal law, law which covers above 100 and as only 100 is reached, every region is allowed to make single recommendations on or off, just to explain this to you. So for the... And you will, that, that's the crazy thing, Frank. For Olaf, who is 30 kilometers far from us in Gelsenkirchen, if they are not reaching this number, they have different rules to follow as the city of Düsseldorf. We might reach it or we don't reach it. And you have, you have, a, you have a patchwork of very varied uh, um, uh, things you can do just 20, 10 kilometers as you crossing a city border or a state border, which is a quite complex undertaking. The Dusseldorfians are very disciplined, so I'm very hopeful <laughs> looking for the day to be reaching 100. It seems to be this will become next Tuesday. And... Um, well, so that was it. So now I'm telling you about the, the, the good thing. Ola, yeah, let's ask Olaf Ola, yeah. first. Um, the idea, and I think this is important, what Stefan said, as a meta rule, before anything can be decided, is that number 100. So you have 101 patients, you cannot open, you have 99. In fact, you can, incredible, uh, you know, like the old German states that had different currencies, there are again different rules. It's a big discussion in Germany about it, but all of the idea of the digital, how do you and the Ruhr Festspiele, how did you decide to do it? What, what did you ask from the artists and what experience did you make? Is it working? Is it not working? Do you like it? Yeah, a lot of questions. Uh, maybe the, the first step was that we decided to have two festivals. We have a real life festival when it's possible and we have a digital festival if it's not possible. So it's not the same, it's the same productions, but it's not the same amount of productions. And then we started discussing with the artists who is like willing or interested in, in transforming their productions into a digital version. And there have been several artists who said, no, my production is a live show. I want to show it in live. So one of them was the Greek uh, uh, choreographer, uh, Dimitris Papayoanou, who um, he last, like for the, in the last three years, his The Great Tamer was a very well-received show throughout the whole world. And there's a new show called Transverse Orientation, who should have live uh, world premiere at our festival. But due to, due to the fact that he, is it, it's only a live show and we cannot show it. We had to cancel it. So the, the world premiere is now postponed to Lyon. So congratulations to Lyon. They will have a live show because they're in France and their opening situations are different than ours. But others decided like, and then we decided for several kind of systems that, that we, some of them, we really bring them here within our, our theater. So they really travel here. And we have a setup with cameras and, and like film crews, like people who are professionals in filming art, filming theater. And then it's recorded or it's live streamed on a platform. 
what I learned is a lot of stuff. I learned, first of all, how to film a theater show that it's interesting to watch because it's, it's not just one camera you put up in the room, you need five, six, seven, maybe you need a, and you need a live direction, you need a live cutter. And so I was confronted with a lot of technology that I didn't know before. I know that it's existing, but I'm, I'm a theater person and not a film person. So that was an encounter with luckily very professional and open-minded um, film people who were interested in helping us out. But the next step was where to, what is the platform you're streaming it on? So it's not YouTube or Vimeo. So we have a, we, we had to find a, a German platform or European platform, and we had to integrate it somehow in our own digital world. And therefore we suddenly were confronted with reprogramming our webpage. We had to program an own, uh, like a digital theater platform on which the stream took place. And then we also decided that some of the shows are behind a, a paywall that you have to pay it, you, you buy a ticket for it. The, the, the ticket price is far lower than a live ticket price, but it is Why? a paywall. How so much? Suddenly, I'll, it's 15 euro, and so it's like 17 bucks or something. Um, and there's also a reduction fee, but you have to choose. And suddenly we've been busy for a long time with a quite small but very ambitious team within my festival team. We're only uh, busy with like uh, creating an own platform on which we have can include all the stuff where you stream, where you see it, where you buy a ticket and then it needs to work. And as Stefan told us, there are some things that didn't work well in the first place. Now we, 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 we improve them. So while we are doing a festival, we are learning technical te technology stuff that I've never been confronted with. And we have people here, some of them, but decided to stay in their places and stream it from there or pre-record it and send it to us. But the maybe best encounter that we have, because all the theaters have the same problem right now. So we decided that every encounter that we have, if we have an artist talk or something, we do it on our main stage and we would put the cameras on that position where usually the actor is placed. So we film the empty, huge empty um, theater venue where you see that usually you as a spectator would, would sit there in these red chairs, but you can't because due to Corona. And so we had some artist talks connected to a theater in Berlin, for example, or in Greece, where they did the same thing in their empty theater. So we were sitting all on our stages and you saw the empty stage, the, the empty um, uh, auditorium, and we were talking with each other after we've seen a live a, a, a show on this digital platform. So we have a festival, we have arts, we have a, a social dist distancing version of a theater production, um, and we have artists who can do their art and they get paid, and we have an audience. And so somehow, even though it is a very new step for us, um, it is also very, very interesting because um, we, also def uh, uh, we also figure out new forms of doing arts. We have a Zoom game, for example. We have these interactive kind of stuff. So we're exploring a lot of stuff that would never have ha happened without Corona because then we would have just simply be a live festival with 220 performances in nine mm -hmm. weeks. Incredible, so incredible innovation that are taking mm -hmm. place by force. And um, Stefan, um, how is it going in your festival? What are you thinking? What are you doing? How are you, what are your decisions? Yeah, we are in a little uh, bit different uh, situation as Olaf, as because uh, my obligation was the, the invitation to the artists of last year. And I had to keep this obligation on this same artist. So I couldn't say you are uninvited and I'm making a new festival next season. So my process uh, in this last year, which took at least really 12 months is the same as Olaf's, as I spent uh, probably months and weeks uh, on Zoom, hopping from Argentina to Chile, to South Africa, to Tanzania, to Japan. And I visited nearly every one of our artists at home, 
uh, in his office, on his balcony, in his kitchen. And it took me an incredible journey through all these homes of all our artists to think about how to transform the piece of art which was created already into a possible piece of art we can bring under these or that circumstances. We created three versions of a festival as we decided, first of all, we are planning to invite everyone and to bring the people to Germany. In a second way, we decided, let's review what is existing material on these groups. Uh, we can might create so-called hybrid forms of interaction with our audience. And at least we are running the same system as Olaf. We equipping our main venues like theater studios. And we are ready to create artistically high quality streams or transmissions that are allowing our audience to have an artistic experience and not just watching something which is probably dead. And these are huge challenges as we, for instance, had planned co-productions with Canadian and South African artists to collaborate with German uh, companies. Uh, what we created and what was amazingly new for me was so-called online directing as we had many artists in Canada and we prepared a production for 20 young people, uh, a contemporary play written by Jordan Tannehill, a young Canadian playwright. And we wanted to invite a Canadian team of artists to work with young Germans in Dusseldorf, which is probably obviously not possible. What we did, uh, we find a shadow team in Germany with young German directors who want to, look, to learn from Canadian artists. And we created two teams, the Canadian team sitting in Toronto and Montreal and the German team, they are ready in Düsseldorf as because rehearsal work is allowed. So theaters are not allowed to play uh, for public, but they are allowed to rehearse. And we brought into MOVE a very unbelievable, interesting process, which breaks the rule of the director is the king, as the director is sitting in Canada and following some rehearsals made by a German team and just giving advices. And he has to trust the German team, what they are doing and they're doing right. So this new way of shared knowledge and shared responsibility brought us two amazingly fruitful productions. They never ever have seen the world um, born. And we will bring these two productions. They're nearly ready to be performed in Germany, in Düsseldorf, directed from outside. This was an unbelievable process with a lot of obstacles and a completely different division of power because if the Canadian director says, I want to have this like that, the German easy could say, no, we will do it this way, trust us. And he has no chance to interfere on in this. And that was quite absolutely amazing. Um, and I would tell you the most fruitful result. This was a, a collaboration we initiated with Port Parole from Montreal and the Munich Kammerspiele, a very famous theater in Munich. Uh, this is about a documentary play where the Canadians insisted that an old person in the play will be played by an old actor and a woman will be played by a woman and so on and so on. And Munich Kammerspieler said, no, we want to make it different. The old women in the play will be played by our youngest artist and the black lady uh, in the play will be played by a young white lady. And this mixture of characters and the uh, the written characters and the actors they fulfilling enriched this play a lot what the Canadian artists did not expect it at all they couldn't trust in this they can be an elder woman has to be played by an elder woman and our colleagues said no we're doing it with a young woman and this was an incredible artistic process which went online in an exchange so and we'll finish I could talk hours on this <laughs> and we'll finish at this What's point. Happened? Yeah. With your, with your, all the plays you invited, they're already created. So there are no commissions, most more or less. 
or some of them, but so you are preparing to have them on stages. We are in, in a, even in a, in a more interesting situation as uh, the last year, uh, ev all festivals have been canceled. We took over some heritage from other festivals, they've been canceled. So the Ministry of Culture, and there is sitting my boss Bettina here, and I like to say it publicly in front of her, we are very grateful to the Ministry as they allowed us to take over a potential a high aesthetically very important potentially projects to take them over to our festival so we got an extra funding for this and we delivered our production body to make this possible one of these amazing things we've been allowed to take over is an uh, installation on the public space, which is called the third space. And this is an installation in a 500 square meter place made by a Berlin architectural team, which is called Raum Labor Berlin. And this is a quite interesting thing. We never could afford this. This is, a, this is a cost of money to create it, to build it up, to design it. And we got this as a gift. And this gift means to us that we have an open air stage in front of our theater, which is an additional venue for our festival to make productions happen. They normally had to be in house, but we now can do them outdoors. And now I'm coming to your real question. Uh, I invited a beautiful opera production from Indonesia, which is called The Planet, made by Gerin Nanguro, and with a 47 head women choir from Kupang. This is on East Timor. The Indonesians are allowed to travel to Germany, but what the Indonesians are not allowed is singing in indoor spaces. This is one of the worst thing you can do. This is strictly forbidden. You are not allowed to make opera. You might have no idea how with sweat and tears, I met this artistic artist uh, via Zoom and I said, Garin, can you imagine to transform or to transfer your opera from an opera house indoor to an open air concert opera? And it took even two seconds. He said, yes, this was my original idea. I wanted to have a street procession. And for the Melbourne Festival, I was obliged to put my performance into an opera house. And I'm so happy you're offering me to bring this opera back on street. So this is Festival Makers Live. I've finished now. I can tell you <laughs> the next 14 oh, hours. Oh, 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 see. Uh, the op this, op this space you created, how many seats are the uh, outdoor theater? Uh, we have a flexible uh, tribune for 500 people. And we will watch very carefully the index number. As the index number is going below 50, we even allowed to sit very close. If we are reaching 70 or 80, this tribune will be for 300 people. And they're sitting, they are seated, the audience are seated in distance by one meter 50 each to other. And we have to follow the rules with mask and testing before entering uh, this place. So that's still open and we created an incredible system uh, for selling tickets as we gave each seat one number. And if we are selling 300 tickets and the day before the performance, the index changes, we can add easily another 150 tickets in the salary in the evening box office. So this you see as an artistic director, you are more or less a businessman, you're busy with all these reglementations. And that's quite a new job. I learned, I can just answer Olaf, I learned so many new things in this job and uh, how theater can work as an interactive uh, um, uh, meeting in the internet. Uh, and many things, there are more than just Zoom meetings possible. Mm, incredible. And we will see how much stays better than outdoor structure in 30 years from now. People will say, well, there was the time of Corona. They built this. And now we have it. Who knows what will happen? Bettina, you work for the ministry. Um, and um, in general, politicians <clears throat> have to 
make uh, value judges. Um, we had uh, Jean-Luc Nancy here, the philosopher who said, you know, the question now is how much is the value of the value of life? Because we all know it has a value, but you know, when 100, 100 people, 50, when do we take risk or not? So what is the value of the value of the arts within that government? Why do they think, you know, uh, this is so important that these massive amounts or, you know, of, of resources, at least to you, to American uh, or New York um, um, proportions, why is that important that the, uh, the region says we do this? I think it's very clear that it's an investment into the intelligence of people and into the being ready to or being pre prepared for unknown things because that's what art is about very much that you, you develop things you don't know and you get in touch with uh, worlds, ideas, text, images, sounds, um, people you don't know. It's, uh, I think for me in art is very much meeting the, the, what is strange for you. That's also why these, I mean, I'm, you have here Olaf and Stefan, which are both so positive and so, with so much energy in a situation which is also in Germany, why it's difficult and we don't know exactly what will happen in the next two or four weeks. It's not clear. There will be new rules on Saturday and we are all struggling to have the theaters open, but it's really an in-between situation. But I think the value of the arts um, is, uh, you, you can talk to so many different people now when you're on the market buying your apple or you go to have a coffee and everybody will say, oh, I'm so hungry for going into a museum. It was the birthday, the 100th birthday of Joseph Beuys yesterday and there's beautiful exhibitions. There's a beautiful uh, exhibition of, on Christoph Schlingensief in the museum in Düsseldorf. And, there's so much, um, so much things you could see and that will nourish your brain. Uh, and I think this period of one year where many things were just forbidden and public life what was not possible, but was very restricted, is um, many people really suffer from this and also very exhausted. But I, I have to say, I saw a beautiful or great, not beautiful work of Lia Rodriguez uh, on his, in a stream and, and how in Hevel am Ufa and you just told about the situation in, in India. So the situation in India or Brazil or in, in many other countries is so difficult for artists. Mm -hmm. So I think we can, and I'm very happy that Stefan and Olaf go with such an energy to realize the festivals in between four versions. Uh, it was quite clear that um, not like in 2020, the festivals will be canceled, but it was, it's still not clear if it's analog, if it's hybrid, if it's digital, and it's, it's this kind of mixed everyday life. And, but this has also to do, and I think people really learn a lot. We always say we jump into digital life, but it's like this. But I think we realize also that we really all have to prepare for the, the transformation we are faced by the development of artificial intelligence and the change of the working world. And so I think this, the arts, are so important to prepare the ground for people to get uh, courage to not get be stuck to what has been behind us because there was a big problem. So many people say, no, let's, let's not go back to normal because normal was the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a, a big jump right now uh, in the whole questions of um, how we deal with nature, how we deal with the climate exchange and all this, this digital transformation and these questions on climate, they get together. How will artists travel in future? I mean, there was so much global traveling and I think this will not be possible in a way, but still we want to produce together and we want to have this exchange. So I think we have to invent new forms of collaboration and of staying in touch with many, many countries from Indonesia to Japan and from Russia to uh, Chile. 
uh, we don't want to lose this, but it will it will change, I'm sure. And so I think for this, um, arts can give a lot of inspiration to people who are in economy, to people who are in, in the techniques, uh, technical field, because it's it's opening the brain and it has always art has always been very much related to science and to um, to the development of the new uh, society. And we have to work on social um, justice. Uh, it's the, the global situation is really, there. there's so many problems we don't face here in Germany, but they are there. And I think mm -hmm. many people think about this and well, how this world will transform. So I think, and for this, the festivals are a very important reflection space that people need to to get also along with the experience that they have made in the pandemic. Mm. That's why I think it's important and I, I think the, the situation what I know about New York is really terrible that so many things stopped that so many people got their jobs cancelled in the same time there's no jobs in restaurants or cafes I, I know when Stefan was talking about the the old the young lady playing the old lady, I thought of the Wusser group. I don't know how they. I also saw them. I think in Theater der Welt, and Joan Jonas was playing Irina in uh, Drei Schwestern of Tschechov, Embrace Up. So there's so fantastic artists in New York, and what I hear from even the big museums, and from Bam MoMA, it's so difficult right now. So I really hope that. I heard that theaters will open now again also, so I really hope that that the arts uh, get a lot of space and when when we are slowly going back to a more public life. The situation is devastating. Um, I think Met Opera singers haven't been paid since last March, unimaginable. Because uh, ministries like yours, your position, it doesn't exist. It will be incredibly hard. The mayor just said, oh, most probably Broadway will open in September. Nobody really knows. They cannot play for 30, 40, 50 percent, 60. It's highly commercial theater. So there are so many questions here. It's uh, stunning and things have to change. Question for Olaf and Stefan, maybe Stefan this time. Um, um, and you go first. Um, is something changing between presenters, the theaters, and the audiences? Will this be a radical change? Is this something, a moment like after World War II, after Corona, something is different? Uh, in this or that case, uh, I feel there is starting point for development of a new form of art which is really driven by uh, digital technique and new ways of interaction. Theater remains theater. It is not changing. People are demanding to sit near each to other with uncommon each to other people. They want to experience sweat and breath and tears and all this together. But we, uh, the win in this is there are remarkable new experiments on online art, uh, which will find its way. This will be maybe a very unique, uh, separate way. Um, the hours to sit in front of a monitor are not that easy to come over. And I think when summer is coming, we will leave all these monitors, hopefully very quick. Uh, I'm very optimistic on this. There is coming a new form of art and will be developed. I have seen remarkable experiments where I felt introduced into a different world by just taking part in an uh, interaction. We have an Israeli company, it's called uh, Puppet Cinema. They're working with puppets and different worlds, they are bringing us in different layers. You will find this in the uh, booklet, it's called The Big Bang, the Urknall. Outstanding, I have never ever seen that kind of artistic approach. I'm very happy to have this now in the program. Uh, but in common, theater will remain theater. This is, uh, and, it, and it might will become even more value because of that experience of loss. That's my conclusion on that. Some of the, I think that some of the things the same. Uh, theater will stay theater, and I think we will have roaring twenties, late twenties after the pandemic somehow not disappeared, but maybe that we can get to public life. And as Stefan said, I'm I'm sure that Broadway will be very vivid again, and 
all the museums will be full of people again. Um, so that's what we experienced. We have sold tickets for a festival, for a live festival, where everybody who, who bought a ticket knew it might not take place. So we, are, we have several shows which are sold out already, even though we do not know whether we can perform them live. And at the same time, we have people who want to see the digital streams, and we are connected now more to the world than before. Because usually you have to come to our place, you have to come to Recklinghausen to see what we are doing here, or you have to go to Avignon, or you have to go to Edinburgh or Vienna or wherever. But this time you also have a chance to connect. F uh, tomorrow night, German time, we will have a um, like a first digital premiere of Sacre by the new circus company Circa from Australia, who have decided not to travel around the world and stay in Australia but due to the no COVID strategy of Australia, everything is open. So there they can perform, but they cannot while they're here. So we will have a, a stream of their brand new show as the first ones who are streaming it online and we will have artist talks afterwards and the artistic director has to get up at five o'clock in the morning Australian time to get to with us in, in German time at late evening uh, 11 o'clock. These are new experiences for a theater festival. We encounter, we, st we, we, we keep on meeting each other, we keep on, keep on exchanging our art, but now you through a digital version. And I hope that some of the stuff sticks with us. Maybe the more um, clever, the more intelligent stuff, maybe hopefully more the stuff that we developed from the very first moment to be digital or to be streamed. Some of the stuff that we are streaming now wasn't meant to be online, but now we are doing it because therefore we have a chance to, to present it. And, and on the same times, I'm very sure and very convinced that we will have a very vivid theater life within the next years again, that brings up new forms and encounters. Um, who are artists you feel? I mean, uh, Stefan mentioned the Israeli company. Maybe you could give us, because we so far away, we don't see enough here. It's very isolated. And that's why we hope to create a 2023 festival. And we need your help. So to say maybe New York will come together and create something like a festival um, that might be close to what you guys are doing and like, traditionally carry on. But what are artists you feel at the moment? They are of interest. Who are artists we say what they are doing is of interest or you invite them, but who also maybe deal with this time and with the digital, um, you know, real, we all the moving. Who are, maybe, who maybe are, I, I just give a yeah. very, 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 just one simple, one single example, which is an, an Indian artist, because you, you've, you've had a chat with India last, yesterday, uh, but who, who lives, his name is Abhishek Tapar, and he lives in Holland, so he has moved to Europe, but he tries to, he tries to, um, within his work, he tries to um, bring us together with his Indian heritage, he's in his early 30s. And he connects you through food. Always in his productions, you have to eat something. And then he still tells stories about that specific food. And it is very radical because in the, he, he brings you into a very cozy situation where you feel comfortable. And then he opens up to a huge political field to what's taking place right now in India, what's taking right now with all these um, hyper-nationalistic Hindu-focused politics of the of the uh, actual government and and the interesting with, with with Abhishek Tapar is that now he is for the first time he tries to trans transform this into a zoom show because he he cannot do it live with our audience usually you have to be live with him cooking eating and so forth and now he even tries to transport it into some and then you have to cook it yourself to taste it because <laughs> so so there's this is somehow um innovative in that way because he has a, a cultural encounter bet between his Indian heritage and living in Europe, but he tries to open it to a world to transport something that is important to him. Even though it's a small work, it's not like 50 people on stage, it's just one person. I'm not sure. But Bettina, what, what, are, what are artwork that inspires you? Say, yes, that's why I do the job. But what, who do you follow? Who do you think this work is meaningful at the moment? In the last year, what you have seen? 
Your microphone is off, Bettina. I mean, in the last year, I couldn't, 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 I could almost see nothing. I saw uh, th there was no theater. There was a very short period. There were some performances in June, and there was a short period in September, October, where the theaters were open, um, and and you that th there was like one third of the audience um, where people could sit very strict rules, you couldn't have a glass of wine, and there are no, no breaks, so there was almost nothing. I, I saw here in Düsseldorf the premiere of Dennis Volpi, who just started with the new ballet company, a uh, very quite young um, director of the company, a very young uh, company, the youngest was 18 on the first premiere, and they had to, to do things like dance the premiere two times, one after the other, because they, they could only have, only have 200 people in a space was around normally 1,000 people. So there was not, a lot, uh, not much to see. I saw one rehearsal of Richard Siegel in Wuppertal with um, Anish Kapoor. It was just a rehearsal. It should come out in March, no way. Um, there was, we had to, planned a big festival for November in Wuppertal because we are preparing, which is great to have the Pina Bausch Center in the old um, Schauspielhaus in Wuppertal, which has to be renovated and there will be an extra building. There's That's a huge project we have. This will be the first center in uh, Germany, at least maybe in the world, which is dedicated to a choreographer. We don't have this until now. And um, this was supposed to be a big meet. And of course, Pina is one of the artists I, I'm still very fond of. And they danced Das Schiff, but it couldn't be public. There was also a kind of streaming because in November there was a total lockdown. And um, so I, I kind of feel in, in, in distance to the arts. I, in the beginning of the lockdown, I was in New Zealand. I just decided to visit my son in March. So uh, I met Lenin Pontifazio and Peter Sellers was in, in Auckland, but this was only one week. And then also in New Zealand, there was a lockdown. So uh, yeah, it's really rare. And uh, I mean, of course, Joseph Boyce, he, in a way he was more important for me than many a theater artist in the beginning. He, I think he was so important for many people working with performance and dance because my main issue is on dance. And there is, of course, a couple of people I I, I, mean, I, I mentioned Booster Group. I think I still I think it's one of the most interesting companies or people. It's a kind, some kind I didn't see work of Jan Fabre. And Johann Simons is doing a great work in Bochum uh, with the company. Um, they also do quite a lot of streaming in the Schauspielhaus um, and uh, have a, a lot of good artists. And the Düsseldorf Schauspielhaus is, uh, Bob Wilson is right now working here in Düsseldorf in, in the Schauspielhaus, I mean, you know him very well. And um, he's preparing a production. Uh, maybe Stefan knows when it will come out. I think it's, it's only in autumn that it will come out. But uh, yeah, so there is a lot, a lot of great, and there's many, many young artists which are <clears throat> really interesting and so a, a generation of artists developing uh, different forms of cooperation and there's a generation which, which is also again more political in their artistic work I think which is very good it's it's a funny question in, the, in this because we all a little bit we all feel like in a vacuum of course you see some streams but I think we all really miss so much to have yeah. live uh, performances. I mean, so I, there was the, one of the last things actually I saw, I initiated a big uh, project in, in the framing of Bauhaus, um, 100 years of Bauhaus in 2019 with Billy Forsythe and with Anne Teresa de Kersmaker. And there was also always tandems of museums and dance houses. So the Volkbank Museum was, was working with Billy Forsythe and Pak Zollverein and Anne Teresa was working in Düsseldorf in the Kunstsammlung and, and Tanzhaus and people like 
Trevell Harrell and Nick Maus were working in Museum Ludwig and in the university in Cologne. And then Anne Teresa, the cast maker and Rosas were, that was actually one of the last things I saw in, I think it's September, they were working in uh, the Columba Museum in Köln, which is an amazing, beautiful building of Zumthor, of the architect. And they were performing all over this um, museum, which was almost empty. And Teresa was just curating some works in it. And this, this was, um, for sure, her work is one of the most uh, yeah. important um, works for me and also to follow. So works just on screen. to mention some people. <laughs> works on screen, some outside, uh, things are changing, galleries, the white box, black box. Um, so maybe to again to all Yeah, but I think it's just to, to, to yeah. add this, I think it's not a question of white box and black box. I think when museums decide for this kind of work, they have to also really to decide for, to put choreography as the masterpiece of visual art in a way. And that's, I think, what we managed in 2019, because you all know how much in Bauhaus the arts were mi mixing. And in a yeah. way, in our world, the, it's all called interdisciplinary, but the structures are still quite separate. And so it is a big difference if you just make a little performance in a museum or this, uh, Anne Teresa was here in Düsseldorf. They really had a huge space where two dan four dancers changing were working for 10 days. And there were 10,000 people in this 10 days looking at Fasel with the music, music of uh, Steve Reich and people coming again and again. So this was a really beautiful situation. And also in Columba, they, they, they really could like, yeah, live in, I remember Teatro di Parma a long time ago, they were saying you have to, in a way to live on stage. And this was really like living in this museum and, and taking this space and the audience was in, in, being part of the space. And I think this can maybe also be a new question to the future, how we create common spaces which are less separated. That's very important. This is a model that somehow worked. I saw her in the travail uh, here in New York. But to Stefan and Olaf, who, do, who should we pay attention to globally, if you can say? I, I, I just wanted to add something to Bettina's beautiful description. As um, which was for me a remarkable encounter with internet, was the planet this, uh, the Museum of uh, Modern Art of the 20th century called K20 in Dusseldorf uh, made a huge presentation of Anna Maria Kerstmaker's uh, work in the context of Bauhaus and this frame. And uh, she was invited for an interview to an audience space, which is a very academic one. It's a wooden space inside the K20 for around about 300 people. And it is a very academic uh, setting and they put two little chairs in front on this tiny little stage and everyone expected that there are sitting two very little women talking by microphone each to other. In the very last moment, uh, a cast maker couldn't come from New York and it was a huge problem how we can do it and what the hell is going on. And then they decided to bring her via live stream on a six by four meter screen. And the performative moment on this event was just incredible because it was not as expected that I'm looking down 60 meters on two mice uh, uh, size people, but there is a cast maker sitting and next to her desk and celebrating her interview onwards to me to audience, interviewed by a very beautiful lady sitting on this tiny little chair down and talking to her. This was a performance in itself on such an incredible aesthetical uh, creation just made out of this mistake that, uh, or problem that no one can fly from New York to Europe. So there are many of these nice details we can learn from. I attended uh, last September an incredible meeting which is called Adam. And this is a highly top secret meeting of young Asian artists which is their belonging in Taipei to the uh, Taipei to the uh, Taiwanese uh, center of the art. What I learned from these young people making a two weeks conference and seminar just by handling their 
mobile devices and making walks through cities, connecting people, interacting by discovering spaces, adding text into this, never seen this before. Incredible, unbelievable. I'm jealous. I'm an old fashioned, boring person. <laughs> I'm delighted by these young people, how credit, creative they are dealing with this situation. So there are many of good things to come. I didn't answer your question, I guess, but, I, but I'm inspired from this very much. Yeah, well, that's true. What's, yeah, what's inspired? Uh... Very inspiring, very inspiring. As they as they are living in a completely different dimension as the mobile device they grew up with is a completely different part of their nature of communication. You know, I was born, we had black and white TV. And in 1968, I remember the color TV came to the world. Uh, what came up in this, my life, even my mother learned to work with a mobile device, but this is a generation, they having this already in a different, deeper layer in their everyday behavior, which I'm not will reach. I'm, I'm enjoying my 53rd year of life, but it is interesting how it works and it inspires me in every sense. I can't handle it, but I'm following it. Mm. But in terms, of, in terms of content, to be honest, I think the inner politics of the United States throughout the last year have been really inspiring also for artists abroad here in Europe. Because as I see it, the empowerment um, that had been brought up with the Black Lives Matter movement really swapped over to the European continent. And the idea of empowerment and, and, and confronting a, a, a majority society within Europe uh, with people of other experiences that we do not have any kind of ideas about our own privileges as a white male person uh, in a position of something. Um, that was also really inspiring for our cur curational uh, view on arts, on artists, on female artists, artists of the Southern, uh, Southern Hemisphere. Um, and I, that was really astonishing to, uh, for, for us that uh, the whole election process, the whole process of change of power was one of the biggest democracies in the world. The shaking of that, the instability um, that had been shown suddenly, um, the massive lying, the massive... Um, um, Destruction, destruction energy of uh, of a of a process that we all perceived as this is the free world, and suddenly we thought maybe it's not. Um, that was really also um, in that term inspiring because it had it showed such a huge uh, new energy of of protesting and going against something, and. Yes, to, really to pinpoint it, like, like the, the, I think the Black Lives uh, Matter movement was also for a, for, for a European art situation inspiring, and it was, came from some area that I didn't expect it so far. Because before that, we were all focusing on Asia, on Africa, and, and suddenly it was the, the US. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of uh, artists even in Europe, they, 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 they got a lot of energy from what, what happened with the last half year, last year in, in your country. Amazing, yeah. It's, I think it is a lot uh, about energy. I think, the, you know, the atmosphere in the city, I mean, the beginning of the war, there was an exchange of energy, an energy of call, and an energy of performance, uh, and the idea of a voice uh, who also was in Düsseldorf, and that we can the idea of stored energy, how you use it, how it's released, that it keeps us alive. And this theater has shown that, as you all pointed out, the major festivals in Europe came out of, uh, after a, a dark, dark period and, uh, and it brought change for the better. And um, the global view that it brought, the idea of uh, the imagination, Edouard Glissant, the great writer uh, here from the Caribbean, uh, who also taught at CUNY studies so much what is wrong is a failure of imagination. Mm -hmm. You cannot imagine a job normally in the coal mines could be as good as, you know, working in a restaurant or running a place or uh, being a, a part of a, a park service. The, the idea of homophobia, of racism, mm -hmm. violence against women, wrong imaginations. 
And theater really can help, as you point out, and as Bettina pointed out. And this is why I think the work of festivals, it's so important. It mm -hmm. travels faster. It, it makes a, a, a point of a new artist and also has an impact in that idea of a Festspieler. And also congratulations to Thomas Oberander for opening the Berlin Festspiele again. It's also not an easy thing to do. Um, and I think also his festival, the Down to Earth, to say, you know, can we do work outside with no electricity? Like really radically asking questions. Why do we have an exhibition about climate change, but it's climate controlled? And if we don't change, what else will change? So these are so many questions. And as you all said, we could talk so much longer. Maybe we also check in in the fall and see how, how did it go? What did you learn? And uh, how did it? And really, we need our help here. There is no big major festival in North America. It's shocking. There was, you know, BAM brought this out on the season, the, the great Next Wave Festival. Lincoln Center Festival was closed down after some controversies or perhaps the people in charge thought it's no longer important to show theater from around the world. We do not have a festival like this. It's shameful. Um, <clears throat> but perhaps this time will help us to create something and uh, we need that dialogue, we need your help. And as you said, what happens here in the US also has an influence. And um, it was all very, very, very significant what you talked about. It might all be obvious and clear to you in Germany and in Europe, but in the context where we listen from now, it is radically different. Uh, it's also a model to look up to. And uh, we would like to thank you all for the big contribution you make towards global theater, theater in general, to keep the energies flowing. Bettina, you know, for helping out, uh, making things happen in that uh, part is his artistic creation, that she supports that structure. And for Stefan and Theater der Welt and, and for Olaf with the Urfestspiele, these are significant symbolic representations that are imaginary, but also real for the moment. And what is real in that moment can also be real in life. That's why theater uh, gets uh, censored. Uh, Abhishek, who from India yesterday, who's been up for five nights in a row trying to connect. He's a writer and playwright as a volunteer to connect people to oxygen machines. He said, my place gets centered in India. And so it must do something. TV and film uh, goes on, but people, government doesn't like my place in a tiny little space. So it has an effect. And um, so you're working for that in a good way. So really, thank you all. Thank you for taking time to join us. You're in the middle of festivals, in the middle of preparing uh, after long days and one more Zoom meeting for you but this was really enlightening it makes me think and um, it's also a push in the arm to go and to see if there is a way to create something like a festival here in new york city and what it would take and um talking about it observing sometimes helps also to create realities so we will see what will happen thanks for how round again for hosting us it's such an important venue and i hope that we will continue the conversation and that we hear more and that we will exchange um, ideas and contribute to that uh, global world. The problems we have, as Bettina said, the climate change problems, the political problems, problems of democracy, they are global problems and they can only be solved locally, but also globally. We need to think in that terms and your festival mm -hmm. are a reminder of it. Thank you all. And um, I hope to all see you again, join you one day in New York City. Here's Theater der Welt, DE. Um, look it up, go to the uh, festival program, uh, lots of it is free, streamings are free. Ruhrfestspiele, what's your website, uh, Ola? It's the same, like, I can, no, I kind of can't, show, can't show you the same thing. Uh, yeah. I, no, it's not, ruhrfestspiele.de. Yeah. Ruhrfestspiele.de, like the one you have here. So Tell us however you want and do Google and you will find it. You will find it, yeah. This yeah, was the invitation to my team to turn back to make the website fit for Monday as we want to come yeah. <laughs> with the program yeah. on Monday. And all my team is following uh, with interest. I'm getting messages in between. Good. And Good. hello, Good. team Theater der Welt. Have fun. Thank you for yeah. being with us. <laughs> and, and Stefan was, at, when we were starting this Zoom, he was getting a mail and a call to inform him about the upcoming rules for next week, right? And what will happen and what will not yeah. he's great. I'm online. So it is all in flux. Bettina, thank you for making this happen, for inviting, help me to invite uh, Stefan and Olaf, and also for your contribution. Your work is so significant, it's so important. In Germany, it's perhaps taken a bit for granted uh, what it is, that's also what I learned here. It is so significant, so fundamental that the idea of uh, support for the arts uh, comes also from the governments we elect, 
there is a human right to, to access to healthcare, access to learning, but also the access to arts and the access to democracy and power to be an equal part. These are fundamental human rights. Yeah. And it's great, you know, that uh, uh, this mm -hmm. is part of that structure that uh, you know, makes it possible. So thank you all. And uh, I hope to see you Thanks soon. Thanks for having us. Stefan, I hope you get good reviews. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So Head thank of you. communication says hello. I just got the message. Whole team of Theatre the World says hello to uh, New York. Thank you, Frank, for this beautiful conversation. And hello to all your students and followers. We are with you and uh, enjoy the rest of this beautiful Thursday, which is gray and rainy here still. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Bye -bye. a lot. Thank Frank. you. Greetings to you. New York. Thank you. Thank you. We need we need your good wishes. Bye bye. Hopefully bye. soon life again. <laughs>